this was like a passion project. And uh, how, have any, were any of you involved in the Indiegogo thing? Did you? Fantastic, that's great. So uh, as you know, it's a passion project. Great people, great lineup. Let's get right into it uh, for comment. And at this time, it is my pleasure to introduce to the stage our friend from the Nerdist, Mr. Chris Hardwick. I just saw you a minute ago. Welcome back. Uh, this is very exciting. Uh, are you guys familiar with Con Man? Do you know the story behind Con Man? Good. Because I think you really need to understand how momentous and incredible this is. Alan Tudyk came up with this idea in Fillion's kitchen. Uh, and it obviously was, you know, they've been to a lot of sci-fi sci conventions, so they came up with this idea. Uh, and they basically just went into the world via Indiegogo and said, hey, can we have a little bit of money for this? And they raised $3.2 million, which was the third highest crowdfunded film uh, across all platforms. And it was made possible entirely by people like you, 46,000 people about. So thank you for doing that because I know uh, uh, several months before, I had heard about the idea, and I talked about it at the end, it's an, and it was an amazing idea. And it really is, you guys, like, like the Laugh Olympics of every person that you love in one thing. And as you can see, there's a lot of chairs here, there's a lot of people that are going to be on the panel. We got some time, we got some runway, we got about an hour and a half, so line up, we're going to do questions in a little bit. Uh, but I do want to point out that uh, this is the first web series ever to take the stage at Hall H, which is a huge deal. And as I introduce this panel of uh, 14 people, you will understand why. First of all, let's bring out Seth Green! behind Michael, my dear friend from the G4 Network, R.I.P., uh, Allison Hayslip! Yeah, start here. You will recognize this next man from his face and also his voice, Nolan North! Also, making his, I believe this is the seventh con that he's been to, Casper Van Ah, crap. Chris. Did I? Chris. Yeah. Listen, I got information before I walked out here to leave two seats at the end of the panel. I didn't realize they were all going to be named. Now, now this is very awkward. It's awkward. Yeah, that's fine. You know, let's just figure it out. The most, of, most of the hour and a half will just be people figuring out where they're supposed to sit. Please save all of your questions. We've got to sort Tons out the time for this. Uh, I'd also like to bring to the stage someone that I know you guys know, Trisha Halper! Also, the amazing and hilarious Mindy Sterling! Uh, my dear friend and sometimes co-worker, Felicia Day! Sincerely one of my oldest friends in the world and my old roommate when we were in college, Will Wheaton! Oh my god. Thanks for Kermit flailing out onto the stage, Will. Yay! Also, uh, I want to bring up some of the makeup and effects guys. Let's first bring out Barry Bishop! A young, up-and-coming actor that I think you guys are going to enjoy by the name of Nathan Fillion. And then finally, uh, the man whose idea birthed this in Nathan's kitchen, uh, please welcome to the stage, oh. Alan Tudor! Yes! Uh, oh. Oh, that's pretty bad, though. 
much of this. Wait, 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 wait a second, wait a second. If you tell us that to leave two seats at the end and then you sit on that end, then we just look like, like jerks. So why don't you come down? No, I, there's two seats, there's two seats saved for you guys at the end of the table. By the way, this is now the first and last web series in Hall H. <laughs> you guys, just very important, I gotta address this, I'm sorry. Hold on a second, guys. Hold the phone. Alan, you're wearing the wrong costume. Wait, what are you talking about? I'm saying this, this character that the costume we're wearing is, uh, he's... They don't want you to say it. He's... He's sleeping. With baby Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. Woo! Alan, you, you misunderstood. You misunderstood. You're, you're playing a new pilot now. Oh, you mean Cash? I mean Cash. Yeah. You mean this guy? Not enough room. Yeah. There we go. Ah. <laughs> <There's another>. <laughs> <laughs> There's ketchup on the floor over here. Just uh, it's gonna be a clean up on aisle five. Thank you. <laughs> that is amazing. Two jumpsuits in the heat of San Diego Thank in you. July. I'm also wearing long underwear. Just you know. <laughs> Good idea. Keep it hot. So this is this is cash. Yes! Cash is the character that you play in the web series version of a show that's not at all if there's any people from Fox here like Firefly. Uh, <laughs> show called Spectrum. Yes. So people haven't really seen anything yet, right? Because you did the campaign and then you guys right. immediately started shooting. And right. So no one's really seen anything of Con Man yet. Why don't we show that? This is never before seen footage. They literally just finished putting it together 20 hours ago. This is as fresh out of the oven as possible. Woo! Let's take a look at a sneak peek of Con Man! <laughs> Exclusively on Vimeo, and you can pre-order it today. Uh, so that's available for pre-order now, and then September 30th, they'll be like, oh, I surprised myself in the future. So uh, enjoy that. Alan, uh, congratulations on the series. It, lo I mean, it looks genuine, it looks amazing. <laughs> so how did you, what, what, where did the idea, like, really, what's the story behind the idea, and how did you get it from Nathan's Kitchen to Hall H? Ah, <laughs> uh, that is a good question. Um, uh, I started going to conventions right after Firefly was canceled uh, in 2002. Boo! It's, it's, boo is right. It's not new news, but yeah, it still sucks. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I started going to conventions then, and then I, I was coming to conventions from an outsider perspective because I was in New York uh, without a TV and uh, thinking I was all artistic. And uh, did Firefly, got introduced, Nathan invited me, and uh, it was fantastic. And then slowly over time, it just started germinating. You just started looking around. A lot of people will look around at the conventions and say, God, somebody needs to make a show about this because it's so much fun. It's so fantastical. You could do a comedy. There's so many amazing characters, especially behind the scenes. So it just slowly, every convention I would go to, I'd go, oh, that's an idea. Oh, I could do that. Like the, the doll convention was a real thing um, in Florida. And I really, it's just like that. I was Florida, in, say no more. Okay. <laughs> So it, it happened like that, and then it was also an opportunity to get in a spaceship again with this guy, and uh, it's kind of a, a, a backdoor way of uh, getting on a space show. Uh, so, but it, but but I feel like like you you got this would have to be the group to make a show like this because you know most of the entertainment industry when they look at our little bubble, they don't have the they don't 
they don't represent it in the right way. They, they sort of make fun of it as opposed to, like, they're laughing at us as opposed to, like, no, this is all, we're all part of this community and these are, you know, like, we can laugh with each other about, about what they're like. So I think it was just the right person hadn't come along to really have the insider point of view. Well, it's, um, thank you. And uh, totally agree, totally agree. Um, uh, but it was also the crowdfunding. Uh, we, we could have been made uh, through a uh, normal studio, just for those same reasons, that this gave us a lot of control to make it the way we knew it should be made, because we've been going to conventions for over a decade, and so it wasn't a foreign idea to us. We've been meeting fans for so long that uh, we felt like we could honor it and uh, poke fun at it in a fun way, like the, the, the tooth fairy who burned down his village. Uh, <laughs> I've met a lot of amazing fans who have actually had a connection with Firefly, and it, they've, it's changed, you know, it helped them through tough times, whether it's a soldier or someone, just whatever, di different things for different people. And uh, so that's a guy who had a tough time, uh, helped him forget about his village because he burned it down. And uh, so it's the same, it's the world and taking some reality, a little nugget of reality and going just a little bit farther because the world allows for so much, so much fun. Did you ever pitch it to television? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so when, when the crowdfunding happened, you raised $3.2 million, did you call those studios and tell them to S on a D because you just raised $3.2 million and that they're wrong and stupid? Can we say S on a D? You can say S on a D. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? That could mean a lot of things. <laughs> slip on a donut. That's what I'm. That's what, that's what you I'm go thinking. slip on a donut, sir. In your F. Um, <laughs> In my F. <laughs> your falafel. Oh, good. Right, right. Sorry, I was born without an F. I don't like to talk about it. Uh, no, I did not. But um, I'm hoping this amazing turnout in this uh, impressive venue. <laughs> You know, they, they can come to their own conclusions. I don't need to stoop to that level. So uh, let's start going down the line, Nathan. How, yeah. When did when this when this idea when when it came to fruition in your kitchen? Would you immediately go? Well, we have to do something with this. I need to be involved with this. <laughs> I remember saying when I remember the day when Alan stole my idea. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, listen, uh, oh, how did I say it earlier? They say a little hard work never killed anyone. I say, why take any chances? <laughs> but Alan wasn't afraid to say, no, you know what? I'm gonna call PJ up right now and get him to do some hard work. <laughs> uh, it was an idea that Alan would not let it die. And uh, soon enough, he had written a couple of episodes. One, uh, the first one he polished up really nicely. He cast a little read through, we went to his house, and it was really enjoyable, we really liked it. And it just never stopped. Until these guys took over, and then it really didn't stop. Yeah, my, my girlfriend has had to listen for quite some time now, sentences that start with, in con man? <laughs> uh, I got an idea, in con man? Uh, it's been going on for a while, it's really, I, I haven't caught up with this. I can't catch up with this, guys, what the hell? And I think, I mean, when you look at the panel of people here, and also obviously in the trailer, there's a ton more people. It feels like everyone, this was a thing that everyone already wanted to do, whether or not they knew it. It was like, oh, well, we have to get in there and make fun of ourselves, uh, play around with this world. You were almost in it several times. I wanted to be in it so bad, but my, my, I, but my work schedule is oppressive and I don't have a life. You, have, uh, you do a lot of work? I I work yeah, no, it's on cable, it's not a big deal, it's done. Uh, <laughs> You're busy? <laughs> yeah, I talk about zombies and give out points. It doesn't matter. Uh, but, uh, but it's a, shut up, I say points, you don't say points. Uh, how dare you? That's my art! Uh, so let's just kind of go down the line and find out like how everyone got involved and you know, was this a type of a show that you had always thought should exist? Let's start with you, Michael. Um, yeah, I, well, what you said just now that everybody wants to be a part of this, and I don't think, Alan, you realize how much we all wanted to be a part of this. Uh, it was actually this year at your birthday party, at Nathan's birthday party, when PJ approached me at a party, 
uh, our producer down there, and he says, um, he goes, Truco, you know, Alan's kind of reluctant to ask, you know, friends for a favor. Would you want to be, you know, maybe do an episode or just do something in common? And I'm looking at PJ going, dude, I will be the busboy who brings more butter to the table. <laughs> I, would, I would do this in a heartbeat because I feel like this is tapping into the zeitgeist right now of, of this popular culture. And this is a this is a kind of show that people are going to want to be a part of. And it was such a no-brainer, man. And I gotta just tell you, I'm so grateful to be here and to have been a part of it. And, and and my favorite part of the story is that I worked before Trisha did, and she told me uh, that Alan was talking about the scene that I had with Nathan, and he goes, I didn't know Truco was funny. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's why you were reluctant to ask me. <laughs> He's hysterical. He's not in this uh, trailer. We're gonna hopefully uh, be able to put him out, and there's gonna be a couple more trailers as we near uh, September 30th. and. He's hysterical. It was like a page and a half to two page scene that is now a five page scene. <laughs> because you and Nathan, uh, you play a cop who pulls Nathan over. And uh, so, much of, so much of what he does was his own thing. You know, coming up to the car, sir, put your hands on the, on the, was it, put your hands on the wheel. Oh my God, you're Jack Moore. I almost shot you. <laughs> you did? <laughs> he's, a, yeah, he's a cop with aggression issues. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'm working it out. I'm working but I mean, that's very sweet. But all that being said, the, 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 the skeleton, the, 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 the framework of this thing is because of Alan and because of his genius. And it because, it's true, man. It's absolutely true. It's fantastic. Can we say shmenius or something like that? Because, yeah. <laughs> Means. Seth Green. Oh, hey, what's up, guys? Who do you who do you who do you play uh, in the? Conference? Oh, I just I told I said I'd do whatever. Honestly, it was kind of the same theory. I had uh, picked up that Funko wash last uh, San Diego Comic Con. I told Alan that I had it for him, and then he was like, "Oh, we should grab dinner or something." And then like eight months go by, and then eventually he's like, "Hey, we should do that dinner." And while we're at dinner, he's like, "Hey." I know everybody's not really into crowdsourcing stuff, but what if we crowdsourced like a really cool project and got all the people that we know in it and it was about cons? And I was like, yeah, all right, literally whatever you want, I'll do it. <laughs> so I play a uh, comic store owner, Casey, Wing uh, Casey Wingwall, who's hosting a mini con. And uh, I got uh, Michael Dorn and Kevin Grievous on stage <laughs> doing epic characters, and then Alan's in the middle doing characters from a show that nobody saw that was old and had incredibly outdated interpretations of ethnic uh, stereotypes. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, bitch? Y'all didn't see that? What's up, bitch? Nope. That was, that was the cartoon. <laughs> the, the panel's called something like Exploring uh, Bigoted Imagery in Hate Art. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, that, you, you contributed to that, uh, that name, didn't you? Did I? I mean, it was on the thing, maybe. Sure. That's a good question. Yeah, like, I'll take credit for anything in this. No, this was all your idea, dude. But we're it was just, just so your puppets. You, basically, you had written it. Who, who, who was involved? Who was everyone who was involved with the writing process? And how much, how much did you guys riff on set? I wrote them, and then there was a lot of riffing on set. Nolan North, uh... I don't think he has one line that I wrote. Maybe one, two. Uh, so he doesn't respect authority, that's good. Yeah, I, I, he plays, I mean, he'll tell you, he plays Jerry Lansing, the mocap king, uh, who's the second best motion capture artist in the world. <laughs> Behind that son of a bitch, uh, Andy Serkis. Uh, Charlatan. <laughs> He's taking all the good monkey roles, man! Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all he does, monkeys. <laughs> we want a monkey call him, uh, but uh, yeah, people, people. It was it was really free since there was nobody in charge but me I, I, and PJ and you know Nathan. We could just say whatever we wanted. Like uh, uh, Milo Vince Migley, you saw him on his motor that motorcycle. That's his. He showed up to work in that motorcycle. I was like, hey, well, can we just put that in here? He's like, love to. Let's put it in there. And then that was that. And can I put some yogurt in? I'm gonna put some yogurt in this dumpster. And then. Uh, Costumes like no, 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 you can't. You're gonna get it on your shirt. We only have one of those. Yeah, yeah. I just talked to the director. He said it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so easy. Do you like? Did you like having that much responsibility where you were supposed to be the guy with all the answers? 
You know what I mean? Like everyone's looking at you because it's your project. Is that was was that overwhelming, or did you kind of glide into it seamlessly? <laughs> no, I didn't glide. There was no gliding. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, it is amazing when you're doing all of, when you're wearing all of those hats. How much needs to be cleared through you? I couldn't believe it. Walking across set, everybody would grab you and go, uh, "This cuff or this cuff? Uh, here's the here's the mock-up for the spaceship thing. Oh, that's great. Uh, oh, Alan, we need to work on the stickers. This is going to be at uh, we have Baycon and we have um, uh, XCon <laughs> or two of our cons. And uh, here's the signage for that. Uh, this color and that. Color. I, it, it just never. It, it was really unbelievable. And then you and you're walking on the way to the set to go. All right, let's do this scene. So it, it was overwhelming. Uh, but what? <laughs> so is this? No. How many episodes did you end up making? Well, it was 120 minutes. So we kind of called it a movie as we were going along because it felt like a movie. Um, so it's 12 10 minute episodes, but they're, they're written as half hour episodes uh, with three acts. So we're releasing them that way too in three, uh, releasing TOO in three uh, episodes at a time so you can watch the story arc. And so we did four half hours. Excellent. Uh, Allison Hayslip, yes. uh, one of my dear friends from the oh, now defunct G4 network. Oh, RIP. May it rest in peace. Yeah. Um, so what, what do you do in Con Man and how did you get involved? Well. I was actually here in San Diego about a month and a half ago. My friends got married down here on a Friday night, and Saturday morning I was very hungover and driving back to LA, and all of a sudden I get a phone call from Alan Tudyk, and I assume it's a butt dial. So I'm like, why would Alan be calling me at 11 a.m. on a Saturday morning? And we get on the phone, and he's like, Allison, what are you doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this week? I'm like, I'm gonna be in New York, why? He's like, oh man. I wanted to offer you this role on Con Man. I'm like, I'm canceling my flight. I'll be there. So <laughs> I found out less than 48 hours beforehand that I was shooting. And uh, so what I found out two days later was that I am Faith and I am uh, Jack Moore's assistant, his personal assistant. But Jack Moore is never where he's supposed to be. So instead, I show up and Jack Moore is on FaceTime. <laughs> What was your experience like working with this group? Oh, it was amazing. Well, I was there day one, right? We were day yeah. one of shooting, and we set up the first scene, and Alan's like, uh, okay, uh, action. <laughs> <laughs> and I, action, I actually I had the very first line recorded on the entire show, and it didn't occur to me until after we cut that first scene that I was like, oh, that was like a lot of pressure, Allison. You just kicked off this whole thing, because it was, one line in that entire scene, too, right? I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Allison, yes, yeah. yes, you did. Would you take us there? I know. But let me tell you, day two on that set, we spent like seven hours in a heated saltwater infinity pool in Malibu in the most perfect weather ever. And it was like the greatest day of my life. I was like, nothing changed, please, ever. They were like, you want, we're not going to. We're not gonna shoot for 15 minutes. You want to get out? I'm like, no. Staying in the pool is way cooler than going back to makeup. You know? Do you want to go to the bath? Super pruny. By the oh, end. I was so waterlogged driving home that day. You know, when you have like water stuck in your head and you're just like, like driving on the 405, like trying to shake it out. <laughs> Worth it. Uh, Casper, how did you get involved with the project? And who are you? There's no. Oh no, but Nolan. But no one said stuff before. <laughs> he's the, he's the, the, the second most popular um, after... Behind that son of a bitch, Andy yes, Serkis. Yeah, yeah. After, after yeah. Monkey, I was Tarzan, so I was another monkey. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no. No? Tell him how we met. I was their fourth choice. <laughs> no, Nolan and I met uh, when we were recording Young Justice the first time, yeah. and uh, then we, we worked together mo motion capturing, um, uh, what was that? Uncharted, and uh, yeah. I was gonna be in Uncharted. You're you're the main dude. I am the main dude in Uncharted and so many yeah. other things. You you know Nolan from so many other things. No, uh, if you knew what he did. Oh. Um, <laughs> So I, was, I had written a character named uh, Nigel Thrice, uh, who was the second best uh, motion capture person. And, uh, <laughs> and then I, when, I, when we started motion capturing, you were doing this character named Jerry Lansing, who was also a motion capture, he was mocap king. And it was a very similar <clears throat> character to Nigel Thrice. And after a couple of months of working together, uh, 
it was just obvious that you had to play Nigel Thrice. Then we changed his name to Jerry Lansing. Uh, yeah. And I mean, you had been living the character for years of, of being Mocap King. Uh, hello, G I want to say Jim. <laughs> yeah. No, it, well, Jerry Lansing was a character that, in between takes of this um, the Uncharted motion capture game, um, just to cut up and goof around because I could, um, <clears throat> just came up with him. He's just this, you know, pompous, self-righteous. Uh, never knew anyone, but you know, Adam Norman. Good to see you. Love your work, Sean. <laughs> um, and it just, it, and it just, it was literally just something that I would, I would make up stuff just to, just to keep loose. And um, when Alan and I worked together, he, yeah, it was it's along the same lines as everybody else's story. <clears throat> he would, uh, he said, well, you know, would you do this? And I was like, absolutely. It was like, I'm like, do I have to pay you? Are there any? Do I need to be clothed? Um, it didn't matter. It was, it was an unbelievable opportunity because in all the on-camera stuff I've done, I'm always the doctor or um, the, the lawyer or I don't get the part. Uh, uh, and this was my first opportunity in I think almost 20 years to do something funny. And, and um, that's who I always felt, you know, that, that's where it belongs. So I mean, I, I owe so much. I'm so grateful. As is everybody, I'm sure, but so grateful to be doing this, and uh, I think people are going to absolutely love it because he's one of the funniest people I've ever met, and just the stuff he does. He hasn't met many people, people though, really. <laughs> people don't. People just try like to people stay away. People. <laughs> and, and Casper plays the bartender. <laughs> the, the bartender. Uh, four different times. You're the perpetual bartender in every... <laughs> just, it's at a bar, and then we go someplace, and he's the bartender at another place. <laughs> in another episode, there's a bartender. He's always the bartender. <laughs> Wherever we go. God bless you for doing that. <laughs> hey, best he's job your, I ever uh, had. He's your, uh, he's your Love Boat Isaac character, basically. No matter what deck they're on, that guy is there. Yeah. And, and how he gets around like the boats. Hologram. Yeah. First of all, Casper, uh, damn your perfect face, hair, and jawline. Um, <laughs> how dare you come in here with that? Uh, but what was the what was the experience like for you, and how and how did you how did you kind of weave in, and what what did you bring? Uh, they, they they just asked for my jaw to come in. And just, <laughs> it, it's the first school of acting I, I I went to. It's just for just for the jaw. It's perfect. Um, and so luckily I didn't have to speak in this. <laughs> it smells good too. <laughs> Casper, yeah, that's that. This is what I do in the movie. Yeah. In the show. Yeah. She's just making drinks. He's just, just making ten a bar. That's what bartenders do. This is all I do. His role. <laughs> his role is jokes. Casper, cradle jokes. the bottom. Just cradle the bottom. Stop that. <laughs> 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 yeah, take that off. Yeah, yeah. Damn it. Yeah. No, come back to him. Come back to him. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's good. Yeah, wipe that off. Casper, just so you know, your role is much larger. If we do more of these, there's a there's a reason who you there's a you are someone important that it. <laughs> It hey, thank you. I mean, I always wanted to be someone important. important. <laughs> Bar Bar now I've, I've got validation here at Comic Con. You all heard it. <laughs> I finally been validated. It's only took me 20, it's taken me uh, 27 years. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yep. What? Yep. I, I got valid. I'm not validated anymore. No, you're, you're just validated. validated. Oh, you're absolutely validated. You're a big, you're a big character. I know. No, it doesn't make sense. Thank you. you. This was a lot of fun. My my manager called me up and he said, Hey, do you want to do this thing? You you. Uh, get to work with these these people here, and uh, you don't say anything. <laughs> you have yes. one line. <laughs> you've got a, you've got one line. You've delivered it amazingly. I, just, I have one line. It just sort of feels like the whole thing is populated with basically just everyone that people love. Just like it basically is just like a it's like a love letter to cons and fan favorites. It sounds like there's like everyone is some someone that people love and recognize. Yes, and, and a lot of people play versions of themselves. Uh, Sean Astin plays himself, himself, but he's like a heavy drinker. And, uh, 
gives bad advice. <laughs> and, uh, that's not Sean Astin at all. Um, Milo, uh, Milo. I hope if we could ever, you know, you know, there's. I have plans for his character too. He, just off set, there was. They had four passports and some foreign currency that was going to possibly be part of his character. That he's just going through the passports. He picks up the phone. Yep. The bear walks in the woods. <laughs> it's worse than I thought. <laughs> Throws his cell phone down, destroys it. What the hell is going on? Don't ask too many questions, Alan. So, you know, I, I hope to have him rappelling down buildings and stuff. Uh, Will, Will um, uh, is not, his character is not incredibly large in this, in this incarnation, but uh, he's, he's a smuggler. And uh, he would appear in another episode that's actually uh, very close to being, eh, it's halfway finished, so, so yeah. Excellent, uh, Trisha. How did you get involved with the project? And do you play yourself or do you play someone else? Well, um, first, as, as having been to some conventions myself, I always thought there was a plethora of things that you could do. So um, it was quite a few months ago, actually, that I got an email from Alan uh, asking, saying, saying that he was doing this, writing this, and um, that there was a character that he kind of wrote with me in mind or thought of me for. And of course, it was an immediate yes that like everyone here said, he's incredibly funny, so uh, I didn't even have to read it, but of course I did. And I, was, I assumed I would be playing a robot in a red dress, or maybe a green <laughs> dress to change things up, you know, turn it a little Christmassy or something, but um, no, I'm playing Louise. And uh, Louise likes conventions as well, and, but she goes to, can I say? Oh yeah, you, yeah, we oh. say it in the trailer that it's a doll convention. She oh, goes yes, to doll yes, hello. conventions. Um, I, I, I go to doll conventions, so we, we, we go on a date and we, we have a little bit of fun, but uh, I, I don't come across as necessarily having a doll to begin with. It's, it's a thing, it's called Reborn. And yeah, um, so I was, I was actually very pleased that I got to play somebody not, not like myself, even though I kind of come up like myself a little bit. And, and then the I comedy. Wanted, I mean, you get to see Trisha do a comedy. I, I've never seen that before, and you're very funny. I mean, all the way to Pratt Falls and stuff, physical comedy and stuff. It's going to be, uh, I can't wait for people to see it. Yeah, I, I was very excited to get to do some comedy and, and also for you to think of me that way. And then I thought, wait, what is he trying to tell me that he thought of me while he was writing this role? <laughs> There's some hidden meaning in there that I haven't quite figured out, but uh, on set it was super fun, and, and um, I will say that Alan got me to kiss in a way I've never got to kiss before. What's that? Let's wait and see. She said she, you got her to kiss in a way that she's never kissed before. That is true. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, Trisha, I just wrote this one extra scene. Uh, <laughs> We got a lot of film, so we're just gonna take this until we get it right. Uh, it took a week to get that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we we don't, don't, much much respect. respect. We did that scene too. <laughs> Everybody had to do that scene. It was fun. <laughs> you guys, oh, I sincerely apologize. I have to go to another panel. What panel are you going to? I know, I know I'm overbooked, but I do want to say, Alan, it's all for you. I love you a lot. This thing is amazing. I can't wait for everybody to see it. Bye, Seth Green. Please drop the mic. There you go. Get out! You get out of here! How dare you! Don't hug him! Get out of here, Seth Green! Get, stop touching people! Leave! How dare you! You get out of here, Seth! And don't you come back! You got the red light. Look, look, everybody's leaving. No, no don't. <laughs> you sit down. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah, no one and I got time. She's Seth's Oh, out. no, she's stalking Seth. That's why. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> totally makes sense. I feel like I've lost my son. Aww. Aww. We can do you another one. Yeah, those, those redheads stick together. Uh, no, Seth Green is dead. Forget about him. He'd want us to move on. <laughs> Mindy Sterling, how did you get involved with the project, and, and what do you what do you do for a living? No, I know what you do for a living. <laughs> You're one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. What do you do for Con Man? Well, I um, I think I am the only one on the panel that never met or knew who Alan Tudyk was. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, I saw him in some, you know, series and stuff, but um, I, I really did not. We did. We were not friends. We had no history. I didn't owe him anything. Um, <laughs> so uh, my call was uh, first, you know, through my agent, you want to do this thing, it's about Comic-Con, and I was in a script, and I read it, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I, too, have done and still do cons. So, um, I really did love it, and I uh, was very excited. I loved the whole campaign and how it was created. I, it, it was very, very different. I love different. I love dark, so this is perfect for me. And um, so... I play Bobby, the very, very colorful sort of, she's dying to be his talent manager, con manager, uh, agent, whatever she can get her hands on, uh, a little controlling, uh, likes to sleep around, um, uh, wears every episode as she wears a different wig. <laughs> I love doing all of that. I found it fascinating and fun. And I think that Alan and I had met, uh, I think twice, just to go over the script and everything before we started working. And, and instantly, it, it was just chemistry. I just loved working with him. Um, he always helped me with my lines. While we were shooting, he literally would be on the other side and mouth my lines <laughs> for me. <laughs> because I have a tendency to just blank and forget. And um, so, yes, he, will, he would just do that, and I would try to say what he wanted me to say. So I hope that it came out okay. Um, but I thought, I mean, the, the, every, you know, the whole experience was amazing. He is so smart, and um, he was so in the zone, and yet never yelled, never seemed annoyed. Uh, never seemed like he was going to quit, um, and yet bombarded constantly with, you know, little things here and there. So really the most generous and most um, innovative and interesting people to work with. So I am so glad to be a part of his, hopefully, his life now. Aww. Wow. Get out of here. What was your original, what was the original goal for the campaign? Well, we, uh, uh, PJ, uh, PJ Harzma. Hey, PJ! Hey, buddy! <laughs> um, uh, we had talked about uh, just just funding the first three episodes, and that, that was what it was, the first three episodes, because we figured it was a half hour, and that was one storyline, and if we could just make that, if we could just make a pilot, then people could get an idea of what it is. But there were four, well, three more half hour episodes that were finished at that point, so we could keep going. And then it became, I mean, because the fans were so amazing, because there was so much support, that we ended, we had been talking about books, because PJ's written four, four? Four. Four, four novels, four sci-fi novels uh, prior to this. Uh, and we wanted to write another book. We'd written the first chapter. Um, and by we wrote, he wrote it, and I just sit there and go, what about this line? Um, uh, and then comic books, we had we, a game, but that was all, we'd all, we back burnered all of that. But since the fans were so enthusiastic and uh, involved, they gave us a lot of money is what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> since they gave us so much money, we were able to keep going, well, if y'all want, we'll do this and we'll do this and we'll do this. So um, we initially just wanted three 10 minute episodes. Uh, that was gonna be, we can make it. It'll, it'll, we'll be able to show you what it is. And uh, now we get to show you a lot, uh, a great deal, and we're, we're looking forward to it. So you chartered a jet to Disney World. No, I mean, it's, it's, I, I think when people hear a number like $3.2 million, they go, oh, that's so much money, you can probably, but that money goes really fast, especially if you're trying to make something of that scope, and you can, I mean, you could see the effect, like the show looks amazing. So is that, like, did, did you, were you amazed at how quickly you can burn through money when you're trying to make something? PJ? Um, it would, it would go like this. When I first read the script, I thought it was the funniest thing I'd ever you read. You need a microphone, PJ. I thought it was the funniest thing I'd ever read, but I took him aside and I go, Alan, you've got a, a convention for a scene. And he's like, no, no, don't worry, we'll just put up a curtain that would put four people in front of a curtain, we'll pretend it's a convention. Cut to renting the Long Beach Convention Center, building an entire con. 
And then, and then he called me the night before. He goes, remember that scene with the alien and the cave? We just do that as a as a comic panel. Oh, I need to do a real one now. So that can you get me a cave? Can you get me a cave for three lines? For th- <laughs> Did we seriously just put a cave together for three lines? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should have written more lines for the cave scene. So, I'm not saying I wasted it. Uh, <laughs> now you got a sweet cave. Actually, the cave was free because we have a, uh, an amazing production designer, and, and oh, she would she would just she just made things happen. Holy like, crap! Free cave. Yeah, she goes. I know. You know, like, so is this a real cave? Because she has a German accent. Is this a real cave? that you want? And I was like, yeah, I know how to get a cave. Oh. <laughs> I have a cave, it's orange, and it looks as if it's been shaped by water. <laughs> Great, I'll have it, <laughs> for free. And so she, she pulled all kinds of strings, and there's, on the spaceship, some of it is really, really amazing, and then, like, these things with the, like, there's balls in my, anyway, whatever. Um, uh, Whoa, go back to that part. <laughs> I'm like, hold on to these balls. Uh, I have some balls that look as though they've been shaped by water. <laughs> oh, okay. They're actually very expensive. <laughs> um, but when I fly the spaceship, I pick them up and then you get all of that uh, hologram stuff and that's how you fly, fly the spaceship. Turn it. Um, but the things that the ball set on, I think, were bottoms of soda bottles that were painted. So you got things like that because we were stretching the budget and then also a lot of... They had that hallway, and as she said, this would be the most expensive 20 minutes ever. <laughs> because it's about how much we spent, we spent all that. Anyway, I don't want to say I wasted it. No. We have that in storage now, by the way. It didn't just get burned at the end. It's, uh, hopefully we'll make more with the spaceship. Dr. Uh, Felicia, I would love to... Hi, Felicia! Hi! How's it going? Hi. Felicia! Um, so when when did you come on and what did you do and just tell us stuff? Okay, I'll give it to you. Um, uh, Alan sent me this script about a year ago, actually, and because I'm my middle name is Web Series. Oh, <laughs> 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 Web Series. It's should, true. It's true. Google it. I just I'm I'm that. It's it's in the Wikipedia. Um, so uh, he said, hey, I was thinking about doing this as a Web Series. Is it, what do you think? Is it a good idea? And I read it and. It was so good and funny, and I could see him in it so clearly, and I was very fortunate to be in Dr. Horrible. Uh, just a little thing. Um, so I had a feeling when I read the script that he could bl- blow up the world the way that Dr. Horrible did, and I was like, oh my god, please do this. And, um, and, I, and I love breaking the system and the fact that they decided to do the crowdfunding, and I did it such an amazing way, and the support was incredible, and their consideration to the fans, it just blew me away. And of course, under, underneath it is all like, get me a part, uh, get me a part, really, hire me. Uh, so Alan called me up and was like, I have this part in the first three episodes, and Karen, she works for the convention, and could you do it? And uh, I, we, we talked about it on set, we actually had never worked together before, but um, but we were in a dollhouse episode in separate scenes right. together, so. Right. so there was no connection at all before then. But we met at one of Joss Whedon's um, Shakespeare readings. Yes, that was yeah. the first time we ever met. It was. was Cleopatra, where Morena Baccarin was Cleopatra. She was Cleopatra. She was amazing. What it sort was... of weird, crazy lives do you guys lead? <laughs> we went to Joss Whedon's and just did some Shakespeare with Morena Baccarin. Well, you know, and then some dragons showed up. Like, it's just a bit crazy. <laughs> I, wanted, I was segueing into something beautiful, Chris. I'm sorry, Felicia. About how, be- how it is a family, and people wouldn't think about it, but the actors at cons form a, a family. We travel a lot, and we see each other, and we hang out and have drinks, and it's, it really, whenever, you know, it, it, it just feels like coming home when you're hanging with a lot of the crew. I mean, I just met you, but. Uh, <laughs> and you love me. <laughs> but it, it, you form a family on a set, and you form a family at a con, and this kind of has the beautifulness of both worlds combined, and I'm so, I'm just grateful to be a part of it, so thank you, Alan. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Will we turn in your Ravenclaw tie? Yeah, I know, me too. Ravenclaw all the way, Gryffindors are jocks. 
Before yeah, Gryffindors are jocks, Ravenclaws are nerds, Slytherins are douchebags, and Hufflepuffs are Hufflepuffs. Uh, what do you want? Um, before I answer the question, can you believe we're at a Hall H together? No, it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, you know, Will, not to bore the crap out of you guys, but you know, when Will and I were teenagers, well, Will was famous ensign. Uh, but we lived together in Westwood. I, we were going to UCI yeah, and like, just, We just, need to get a time machine and like Bill and Ted style and go back and just knock on the door of the apartment on Strathmore and be like, you guys, in like 20 years, it's gonna be the coolest thing ever. And then our younger selves are gonna be like, why don't you guys shave once in a while? those guys. <laughs> so I got, um, uh, uh, Nathan texted me one morning, which is a thing I can say, which is really weird, and was like, hey, we're, um, Alan and I are doing this thing and we're going to crowdfund it. It would be really neat if you would like just tell Twitter about it. And my response was, you don't need me, Nathan. <laughs> like, you've got this. <laughs> And like, we all you... need a little will inside. <laughs> 45 minutes later, when it's blown through whatever their funding goal is, I, I texted Nathan back and I was like, congratulations, do, do you still want me to do it? And he was like, oh, it would be great if you did what? So I did. And then months went by and now everyone I know is working on Con Man. <laughs> and I'm getting sadder and sadder. <laughs> and drunker, and drunker, and I'm buying myself things on Amazon to try to fill the gaps, and I'm just, the bottles are littering my office, and I haven't changed my clothes in like a week, and I get an email, and the email says, Alan Judith would love for you to come do this thing in Con Man, and my response was, what's Chris Hardwick doing that he wasn't available? All right. <laughs> generally my first response to whenever anyone asks me to do anything. That's, that's great, that's that, come on. And, and they were like, he's doing At Midnight and can't make it. Would you, uh, would you please come in and do this? And, and, I said, I, and I said, I didn't even have to know what it, what it was. I didn't have to know what the character was. I said, yeah, I'm really excited about this. I would love to do it. And it would mean the world to me to come and be involved in it. And um, I did one of those things where I got really, really, really lucky where I am in a scene with funnier and better and more experienced actors than me, and I get one line, and it's hilarious. And, and it's like the easiest thing. It's one of the greatest like, actor sleight of hand tricks in the world. His, again, his role is much larger, I have to say. Um, I had hoped to bring his character you know, in. It was, it was lucky to bring his character in earlier, so. There'll be a callback if we make more of these. <laughs> well, I would imagine, I mean, at this point, have you been approached by anyone yet? I mean, did any, did any larger company go, ah, interesting, and, and try to scoop it up? No. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess that was a very bad question, then. I, I, don't, I don't know, uh, if, you know what that would be like. I mean, we'll, we'll see if that kind of thing happens, but I don't know. You know, we, we, it was a frustrating process when we did approach them, so I, I don't know what that would be like. Yeah. And of course, you know, you talk to studio people and they're like, Alan, we always knew this would be a big hit! You know, like they always want to take credit for shit, and yeah. even when they didn't do anything. My, my, I have to say, my agents fired me, like... <laughs> yeah. They can't fire you! They work for you! What are you talking about? Like, I, they're like, it's pilot season. I said, you know what, I really, I, I've got to focus because it's the second pilot season. I'm like, I'm sitting out for con man. I really want to get this made. And they said, I said, I can do something in six months. And they said, yeah. <laughs> well, we'd love for you to do that with someone else. And, uh... Oh my god, you know, the suck it list is growing with you. Like, there are so many people who can suck it at this point. And I hope that this is the biggest, I hope this is the biggest thing ever because then you have that moment where people come back and they're like, hey, and you're like, that's weird, because, I mean, Alan. Alan, Alan and I met in 2001, we did a pilot together. Yeah which we were convinced was gonna get picked up. We played Woo! Brothers, all the Friends people produced it. So we were already talking about what cars we were gonna buy, and uh, 
And it had an amazing cast. It was like Kathy Moriarty and Leslie Ann Warren and Dan Hedaya and us and uh, and then it, it nothing. And then nothing after. How do you that. kill a cactus? It's the, <laughs> that was one of the jokes. The, that was one of my. Yeah, and I came out in my underwear. I was chunkier then, and so that was funny. You had a, uh, you had a, a, a jelly donut bit where you bit into the. It was like the last thing. Like yeah, um, you bit into it and had the blob all over you. And that I mean, was the well, hilarious oh, antics. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, people were like, "You should host things." And I'm like, "Okay." Uh, <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when you look at the scope of this project and you realize that, as I said, all these people are fan favorites, it was funded by fans, and it's about fandom and fans. I mean, I, I think it's just this sort of the, I, to, to be honest, I think it's better that no one got their grubby corporate mitts on it because you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to tell the story in an authentic way without someone leaning in and screwing it up. With fans. Like, uh, the, the, the group, the people that you see in the background are fans. We were able to give uh, lines. What? The Guild of Extras. The Guild of Extras. The Guild of Extras. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. <laughs> yes, they named themselves the Guild of Extras. Uh, but we got to eat lunch, hang out all day long. People got lines. I mean, it was a... It was a lot of fun. Like, the community didn't stop right there. They came in and we made this together. And it, it, I mean, really, we really made it together. So, uh, and, and not just figuratively, we made it together. They hung out in that hot comic book store all day long uh, when we shot there. And so, this is really, it, was, it's, it really feels like family. There's so many people on the panel that I think we should allow some extra time for Q&A. Uh, so if you wanna... Let me, just, let me just really quickly say, PJ Harzma, this could not have been made without you. Uh, you know, I, I feel like people don't, people don't know PJ, and also his daughter is here, Skylar, who uh, is in Spectrum, and she's amazing in Spectrum. She's the one with the glowing eyes. Um, uh, she was brilliant, and uh, what a good debut for you, Skylar. No. Um, but PJ, like, uh, he, you know, we call ourselves producers, but PJ's the producer. PJ knows what he's doing, and uh, honestly, you can't... Uh, and why it looks so good is because of PJ. And that hair. Mm. Yeah, that hair. <laughs> that Beautiful. shock of hair. It's... it's, it's uh, oh, just like an, cry. It's, it's just like, like an ocean wave, wave crashing on a shore. A gray ocean. <laughs> Gorgeous. You silver fox. Uh, Sky, can you hear us down there? Sky, can you hear? You can't. Okay. <laughs> she can't. She's not listening. Sky, did you have fun working on this? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Skyler. Skyler took my direction kind of poorly because I give, I was just so, like, it was just complex. So Nathan did all of her direction. Remember, use your imagination. <laughs> so we have to create the hashtag imagination right now and make it trend. <laughs>